being here. My pleasure. Uh, thank, uh, well, PDQ Bob's birthday is coming up very soon, and there's no doubt that the world is awaiting this event with great anticipation. Uh, this would be his 271st birthday. Oh, really? I hadn't figured that since out. Since he was okay. born in 1742. <laughs> So that's a lot of candles. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you, what are your particular thoughts about this birthday milestone? Well, I think it's just amazing that considering that he is generally regarded as the worst composer who ever trod organ pedals, that he still uh, gets played so much after all that time. Uh, most of his music uh, is available from my publisher by purchase or rental and and it's just things get played all over the place so I think he never would have you know been able to imagine uh, such longevity uh, but uh, I think it's sort of nice. That's great. Interestingly or perhaps not so interestingly it turns out that his birthday is on April 1st. I know that is which an interesting is April Fool's Day. Yes. Um, has anything ever been written about this coincidence? Not that I know of. People have written uh, theses on, on PDQ Bach and, and uh, but I've never heard anybody delve into that uh, uh, numerical question. Uh, I don't think, he, he usually himself didn't know what day it was, uh, so I doubt if it made much difference to him. Mm -hmm. What kind of dissertations were written about his music? Oh, I've just uh, heard about, uh, uh, one was just a general one on, on PDQ Bach that somebody sent me, and uh, uh, so I, I can't think of anything more specific, but I have every once in a while somebody will send me a dissertation or I'll hear about the dissertation that somebody's so done. this is for real? You mean yeah, this is for real, right. Real yeah. Yeah, right. You, can, you can get degrees in almost anything now, <laughs> hula hooping or whatever. <laughs> Something to think about. <laughs> so as you're the world expert uh -huh. on Peter Kubach and his music, do you have any new insights or have you come across anything uh, that's been previously undiscovered about his music or writings about him? Are criticisms about him and his music? Well, criticism is sort of useless with PDQ Bach. The most recent discovery uh, of mine is a piece. You know, the interesting thing about PDQ Bach is you know, he's the only dead composer who can still be commissioned. And uh, I received a commission from a percussion duo, uh, and it was really peculiar. They wondered if there was any piece for flutes and percussion in which the flutes were used on the percussion rather than played in their normal way. And they certainly came to the right place. PDQ Bach is the only person I can imagine doing something as stupid as that. And uh, I did manage to find it, and uh, it's been premiered, as I understand, in Ames, Iowa, which is my hometown. And, um, uh, but I haven't heard it yet myself, so yes. I'm hoping they're going to send me a, a video or something. Maybe it'll be recorded. Yes, right. <laughs> Uh, in addition to his emulating the music of Mozart and Haydn, which we know is the polite way of saying that he stole, right. I have found that there are numerous instances in his music with uh, suggestions of jazz, harmonies, and um, chords. Um, do you think that that might have come from his inspiration during one of his three creative periods? Well, uh, Peter Q. Bach was definitely ahead of his time. He was one of the biggest heads of his time, as a matter of fact. And, and uh, he, uh, something I think that is not always pointed out is he was one of the most original composers who ever lived. And many of the things that he did that were not typical of his time have since, as you indicate, uh, be, been developed by other people into jazz and, and rock and, and folk music, all sorts of things. He, he, since he didn't care what he wrote, he just wrote all sorts of stuff and some of it was not like Haydn or Mozart. And um, I think he needs to be given the credit for coming up with, with all that stuff. I read uh, some very exciting news that uh, PDQ Bach was recently paroled. Yes. <laughs> and he's ready to party. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> Actually, that's me who was recently paroled. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> Professor Shickley. Uh, uh, and um, I um, took a couple of years off from touring, and next season I'm going to start again. 
yes. on your website uh -huh. that it, you have the 2013-14 PDQ box touring season and that it'll be up and running yep. from January through May of 2014. Right. It's very exciting. I always uh, keep some time, keep a lot of time each year free for composing but, um, and that's uh, why I only go out on the road part of the year. Mm -hmm. So do you have any plans for the tour in the near future? Well, um, I'm offering two programs, the chamber programs, the intimate programs, um, but which one is done is up to the to the venue. So uh, I, I have just uh, just gave my uh, my booking agent this uh, you know the news that I was going to go back a few weeks ago. So mm -hmm. we're still seeing how it's going to go. It's wonderful for the new audiences who will have the opportunity to hear. PDQ box music for the very first time. What would you like to say to them? Well, I think the the basic thing is just expect the unexpected, and um, um, I must say that my experience from the past is that you never know who's going to be a PDQ box fan. They, most of the people who come to the concerts are people who listen to classical music, but not all. Uh, a friend of mine told me his father used to come to the concerts just to hear the stand-up part, my introductions, you know, and um, didn't care about the music at all. So uh, I think it's just a matter of, of uh, trying to have a good time, which is what I'm about. Um, do you have any personal thoughts that you would like to share about what PDQ Bach means to you after all these many years? Well, yeah, I think that I've always been a person who likes to entertain and who likes to laugh and make other people laugh. Mm -hmm. My mother says I've been entertaining since I was a year and a half old. I told that to a musician who's worked with me and she said, what took you so long? <laughs> and so it's just a, uh, a PDQ. And also I should mention perhaps that I was a big Spike Jones fan when I was a kid. And uh, younger viewers may not I remember Spike Jones, but he had a comedy band in the 40s and 50s and uh, did takeoffs mostly on popular music, but on some some of the popular classics like Carmen and the Nutcracker Suite. And he just had a crack band. It was from him, I think, that I learned subconsciously that the better it's played, the funnier it is. That just because it's PDQ Bach doesn't mean uh, you don't have to play it properly. And um, so I think it's just, for me, it's just a matter of keeping that spirit of, the spirit of Spike Jones in my life. Well, I had visited the um, Theater Presser website, you know, uh -huh. the Composer Gallery, and they have that wonderful video uh -huh. of you, and, and you were entertaining there, all those wonderful pictures of you performing and entertaining from an well, early like 12, age. probably. But um, um, I, I put together, when I was 12, uh, a, a, a Spike Jones wannabe band, uh, called Jerky Gems and his Bommy Brothers, and uh, we had, uh, in those days, you made everything out of orange crates. Uh, and so we had bandstands with orange crates, and uh, made out of orange crates with JJ on the front for Jerky Gems. And uh, the in instrumentation of that band was two clarinets, violin, and tom-tom, because that's what we had. So that was what my very first pieces were written for. That's wonderful. Um, do you remember the moment when you came up with the, with the idea of PDQ Bach? Well, I remember the moment, but not the person. My brother, who was a musician, and uh, a friend, Ernie Lloyd, in Fargo, North Dakota, this is where I uh, uh, spent my teenage years. Uh, Ernie Lloyd, in addition to being a musician, liked the technical aspect. He, and tape recorders, home tape recorders, had just come out, and, and he liked the idea of trying to overdub, you know, record. Uh, layers and in those days you had to really you had to match the impedance and it wasn't like it is now where you just flick a switch and uh, so we recorded the first movement of the second Brandenburg concerto with my brother playing the high parts on violin and viola and Ernie playing the low parts on, on cello and me playing the wind parts two octaves lower on bassoon uh, and it sounded a little bit like mud wrestling but it was a lot of fun and so we decided to get together the next week and record something else. And, and we had been listening to Bach's Coffee Cantata, you know, one of his few humorous works. 
And uh, so I came up with this piece called the Sanka Cantata, and we recorded it. And uh, since we made the recording in the form of a radio broadcast, we thought this composer needs a name. Who is it going to be? And neither one of us, none of us, my brother or Ernie or I, has ever been able to remember which one of us came up with PDQ Bach, uh, but that's the name that he got given. And that expression was something that when my mother was young, uh, it was used the way ASAP is used now, it went pretty damn quick. So, you know, you get over here, PDQ. And it's interesting now that nobody says that anymore, but sometimes you still see delivery services or anything that's supposed to be fast named PDQ. So that's, that's where the name first uh, came to be, and it, it laid fallow uh, for about six years until I started doing humorous concerts at Juilliard when I was a student there. And then uh, PDQ Bach seemed the obvious composer of these pieces that I was coming up with. Were you a big fan of Bach as you were oh, yeah. developing yeah, as, a, as a young musician? Yeah, I went, well, I was not a prodigy. I didn't get interested in music in any serious way until I was about 12. When I was eight, my parents said I had to take piano lessons for a summer and that if I didn't like it, I could quit. And I didn't like it and I quit. Uh, but then about four years later, my brother had started playing violin and uh, I, although I played clarinet in that first little band I told you about, I soon switched to bassoon and played bassoon in the Fargo-Moorhead Community Orchestra and, uh, and that, that, that was it. From then on I was uh, interested in, only in music. And how lucky we are for <laughs> well, that. Me too. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you very much, Peter Schickley. It's a pleasure and thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. We think that uh, April 16th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it, exactly. Right. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I missed it's that. Just... Right? <laughs> Tell me now. <laughs> All right, no. I'm just amazed, you know, when, when I started doing interviews in the 1960s. You know, these huge cameras and stuff like that, and now it's like this, right? Yep. I still get a thrill when I go to Carnegie Hall. <laughs>